Hello dear friend, thank you so much for watching and connecting one more time from Odessa, Texas. This is Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church. The evening of Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. And it's my privilege to share with you God's word. The Bible study of this evening comes from the letter to the Romans. We started this recently, and this is chapter 1. We are reading from the verse 18 through 27. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God shows His anger from heaven against all the evil and wrong things that people do. Their evil lives hide the truth they have. This makes God angry because they have shown what He is like. Yes, God has made it clear to them. There are things about God that people cannot see. His eternal power and all that makes Him God. But since the beginning of the world, those things have been easy for people to understand. They are made clear in what God has made, so people have no excuse for the evil they do. From the days of uh, Adam and Eve all the way through the history of humankind and all the continents, through all the tribes, nations, people always wonder about their origin. People wonder about where they come from. And there are theories, as you know. Some people believe we come from aliens. Other people believe that we are the result of an explosion. How about that? Other people believe that we are the result of an, of an evolution. From a little cell to a little organism, evolving to a monkey, and eventually humans. Well, the truth is, many people throughout history have been wondering, but the creation itself shows them that there has to be a creator. Somebody that orchestrated everything that we see. This passage tells us basically this. But the part that is more interesting is, is the fact that although there is evidence that there is a power behind all this, people choose to do what is evil. And there is no excuse for such a thing. Some people, even in these days, like the idea of exploring things because they probably they are young. They are unexperienced. They want to try things and see how, how things are in certain areas of life. Although we understand that, we know that it's dangerous because there are so many things that you don't need to explore or investigate how they affect you and your body and your mind, etc. But I am talking now about evil actions. And people... Sometimes they want to do evil actions because they think that there, there is a reason why they can do it. Because they want to somehow discover if there is a power behind all this. And, and the reason behind it is that they are longing for that encounter with God. So it is so bizarre when you think about it that people like to do evil things because they are wondering if there is a power out there that will talk to me, that will confront me with, with what I am doing. Interesting, huh? Interesting thought. Let's continue the reading from verse 21 through 23. People knew God, but they did not honor Him as God, and they did not thank Him. Their ideas were all useless. There was no one good thought left in their foolish minds. They said they were wise, but they became fools. Instead of honoring the divine greatness of God, who lives forever, they traded it for the worship of idols, things made to look like humans who get sick and die, or like birds, animals, and snakes. You know, they knew about the Lord. 
people know about God. In these days, it's exactly what happens. They know there is one God. You know, even though they say, I don't believe or whatever, deep in their hearts, they know that there is one God. But they choose to not honor God as, as such. As the master of the universe is a very defiant attitude that so many people have today. And rather, instead of giving, giving him thanks for life and the opportunities they have to do things with their lives, they, they prefer to do other things, which is to worship creation, to worship creatures, to worship idols, to worship individuals, to worship everything that they can see, and they become idolatrous. What is an idolatrous? It is an idolizer. In other words, it's somebody that puts something or someone in that position of honor and bow down before that thing or person in such a way that that person, that thing becomes their God. That is become an idolater or idolizer. And they have done that. They still do that today. You see so many people today that they are uh, not is wrong to protect the planet, but they put the planet and ecology and the, the ecosystem in such a level of importance like the rest has no meaning or no value or protecting certain animals and creatures because they are <laughs> in danger of extinction. Really? And what about individuals that they just idolize other individuals, whether they are in the arts or sports or politics or business or education, you name it. Somehow people defiantly decide, I'm not going to honor God, the true God, that in my heart I know exists, that I know He is the creator of heaven and earth, that I know that I have to give an account eventually. I, this is what they think, I intentionally decide that I'm not going to honor Him. In fact, I don't need to give Him thanks for anything. They decide to not thank him for life. And yet, they are so willing to go worshiping idols, worshiping birds, the scripture says, or snakes, worshiping the creation and creatures rather than worshiping the creator of everything. Awful. That is exactly what the scripture says here. Let's keep continuing. Now from verse 24 through 27. People wanted only to do evil. So God left them and let them go their sinful way. And so they became completely immoral and used their bodies in shameful ways with each other. They traded the truth of God for a lie. They bow down and worship the things God made instead of worshiping the God who made those things. He is the one who should be praised forever. Amen. 26. Because people did those things, God left them and let them do the shameful things they wanted to do. Women stopped having natural sex with men and started having sex with other women. In the same way, men stopped having natural sex with women and began wanting each other all the time. Men did shameful things with other men, and in their bodies they received the punishment for those things. I want to give you an analogy so you can understand better this passage. Imagine First of all, imagine you are a child and your parents or your grandparents or wherever you live, the adults responsible for you tell you 
These are the rules in the house. You need to behave this way. There are some things that you are not allowed to do, and we expect you to obey the rules. You are the child. But you defiantly say, I'm no one, I don't want to do what you say. I want to do whatever I want. So if you're a child and you live in a house where the adults responsible for your sake, for the, the adults that are in charge of that household are telling you there are rules and they give you restrictions and limits where you can go. But if you decide to trespass those limits, to disrespect the boundaries, you know that you are going to be in trouble. You know that. You're a child. Imagine this. And you do it once, and you get in trouble. You do it twice, you get again in trouble. And the more that you continue doing what is wrong, going against the rules, there is a moment when this adult is going to be fed up with you, and, I'm going to, and he is going to, or she is going to, let you go. You, you will do whatever you want. Now, let's change for a moment the analogy. Now, you are the dad, you are the mom, and you have kids under your care. You are responsible for children in your house. All right? You are the ones setting the rules. You know what is dangerous and what, what are the things that kids can do and what are the things that kids cannot do. You tell the kids, you are the adult. Do you understand? In this second analogy, you are the adult. You establish the limits. You set the boundaries. But there is a child there that defiantly doesn't want to do what you say. This child doesn't want to do anything you tell him or tell her. Rather, wants to do whatever the child wants to do. And so this respects the boundaries, disobeys the rules, and gets in trouble once. Gets in trouble. He does it, she does it again. Two counts. And again, three how many times will you allow that disrespect to happen in that household? You know that there is a moment when you will just say, enough is enough. I'm done with you. And then you say, I'm going to cut the leash with you. You want to do wrong? Go ahead. You, wanna, you want to do what is absolutely incorrect? Go ahead. But don't come back to this house because there are rules in this house. I'm just caught in the leash. You know, whether you are the adult establishing the rules or you are the child disrespecting the rules, you know very well that in the bottom of our hearts, everyone is going to do whatever everyone wants to do. And honestly, nobody's going to stop you for, for doing those things. Well, this passage in verses 24 through 27 is telling us that God got so fed up with humans that he decided to cut the leash. And as a result of that, people became doers of shameful things. It's not that influences from outside necessarily force people to do shameful things. Do you understand? There are specific situations where there is abuse and the context the context is, is so horrible that pretty much kids do not have much options. But honestly, deep down in our hearts, we all know what is right and what is wrong. And when we choose to go into the bad path, when we choose to do what is wrong, and the Lord God cut the leash because... People didn't want to obey him. They went and became evildoers of shameful, shameful things. And as a result of that, it says at the end of the verse 27, that there is a punishment in their bodies. And then you wonder, why is it that so many people have 
tremendous problems in their bodies when they have this absolutely immoral behavior. Things that are, it's a shame even to, to think about it or to talk about it. Monstrosities that people do. Paul, in this section of the letter to the Romans, he is establishing something so important. And you know what is that? He is establishing that there is no way that evildoers will justify their behavior and say, well, you don't know my story. I'm, I'm this way because all these things that happened to me. You know what? I, I am this way because I didn't know anything about God. You know what? I behave in this way because nobody told me otherwise. Paul is establishing here in this second part of the chapter number one, that actually there is a freedom, there is a will in the soul of each individual where you and only you can make a decision. And it is absolutely absurd to try to justify that behavior and those decisions based on blaming somebody else. Because deep down in our hearts, we know what is right and what is wrong. For those individuals that are immersed in all these shameful things, there is punishment in their own bodies. And it is for real. And it is sad. Many things that people live, punishment in their bodies that were provoked by their actions. You see, rather than thanking God for life and honoring God for being the creator, they said, no, I don't want to give thanks to God. I don't want to honor God. I'd rather to worship this thing. I want, I'd rather to worship my animal here, my creation here, my own creature here, or my whatever, whomever. They decided not to worship God, not to thank God, but to worship something created, something that is not holy, something that cannot give life. And the next thing after doing that is moving to a path of doing shameful things, which it brings a horrible consequence of punishment in their own bodies. It is sad what happens today in, in the life of many people. And perhaps if you are a believer, you are thinking in somebody, maybe in some relative of yours, somebody that you know, a friend that is going through a lot, and you know that is because of their behavior and their decisions. It's possible, but also it's possible that you are the one, my friend, that has gone through a lot. You have gone through a lot. You are the one who is suffering today the punishment in your own body for shameful things that you were practicing. And you are wondering, is there any hope for me? I have news for you. There is always hope in Jesus. My friend, even if you die as a result of whatever punishment you are having in your own body, even if you physically die, there is always hope for you, an eternity that is waiting for you in Jesus. As long as you open your heart and let the Holy Spirit dwell into your heart, that you receive the forgiveness of your sins. So your name will be written in the book of life. You will be able to declare that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And all that is the result of the grace of God. You don't have to do anything about it other than Believing that he is able to save you and forgive you. Believing by faith, which is the force that is working right now into your mind, into your emotions. The spiritual force that is working right now 
touching your heart, touching your life, allowing you to have a little bit of hope. And slowly that hopes, that hope becomes a strong conviction that you can go to heaven because the Lord wants you there. Just receive the gift of your salvation. And don't forget the importance of admitting that you did wrong. And that, my friend, it's the result of humility. Acknowledging that you were wrong. Accepting maybe that you are wrong today. Stop blaming everybody. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming even yourself. Just accept that you made decisions, that you are today regretting those decisions, but you want to have a better future. And Jesus Christ is doable. Just receive that forgiveness in your heart and say a prayer. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Say with me, dear God, I am sorry for the decisions I made. I am suffering the consequences of my decisions. And I don't like it. I am ashamed of what I have done. And I need your help. I believe that Jesus can save me. I open my heart today. Let your Holy Spirit come and dwell in my heart. And change me. And transform me. I want to become a new creation. In Jesus Christ. Amen. My friend. You receive now. The forgiveness of your sins. You are forgiven. And you are joining us. In heaven. Whether it is immediately. If you die soon. To this world. Or eventually. When the Lord Jesus comes back. For his church. Welcome to the family of God. You have a beautiful night. Bye.